Okay, we've accepted the challenge. Now let's battle. Oh wait, hold on. What's this? Oh, it's just a team preview. Meh, whatever. Let's just click on done and beat the crap out of this guy already. Wait, no. Don't click on that. It's a trap. I hope you didn't click on that because that's one of the biggest mistakes players make. If I asked you, what do you think is the most important part of a battle? Most people would answer that it all depends on the battle. And that is true. But the battle itself is not the most important part. The most important part of a battle is the part that comes before the battle. That is, the team preview. The team preview is the most essential tool of the game. It is the most determinant factor of a win or a loss. And sadly, most players don't use this tool to its fullest. The team preview option allows you to already observe your opponent's team, allowing you to form a plan before the battle. It allows you to analyze and make educated predictions as to what each of your opponent's Pokemon's EVs, natures, and so are. I am using the term educated prediction here because that there is a statistical degree to what is considered a good prediction. So the best approach to make when you make a prediction is one that favors reward over risk. And I don't like calling it an educated guess because even though you're deciding on a logical basis, you should never guess. You should always predict. Predicting is the art of asserting what will happen in the future. Guessing is plainly what you think will happen without much reason. The key word here is future. You want to always be aware of the future in a battle. Don't just make a move just because it sounds good. Plan. 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 Plan it out before you do it. Just because Latias completely shuts down Rotom Wash doesn't mean you should switch to Latias to counter it. Rotom Wash can easily just Volt Switch on, your, on you and switch to Tyranitar. Tyranitar completely shuts you down by trapping you with Pursuit. Being able to know your opponent's team is very crucial. It allows you to make an educated prediction with sufficient accuracy. So let's look at our opponent's team more closely this time and I'll show you what I mean. The first thing we want to do now is observe and analyze our opponent's team. Looking at our opponent's team, most people can already tell that it is a pretty standard OU Sandstorm team. So let's now analyze this team. There are two possible Stealth Rock supporters on this team, Selby and Tyranitar. Most players from experience already know that Tyranitar is the more commonly used Stealth Rock supporter. But you should never neglect the possibility of the other possible Stealth Rock supporters. It's possible that Tyranitar could be a Choice Band, Choice Scarf, Sub, Focus Punch, many different types of sets. Rotomash could be a Standard Leftovers, Vault Switcher, or Choice Scarf, or even Choice Specs. Scizor could be the standard Choice Band or Sword Stand set. Landorus could be Choice Scarf, Expert Belt, Substitute, many different sets. Terrakion could be a Double Dancer, Choice Scarf, or even Choice Band. Celebi could be a Nasty Platter, U-Turner, or even a Stealth Rock Supporter as we've mentioned. Now, most teams have a common goal, following a common idea. So let's make some educated predictions as to what the idea or goal behind this team may be. We know that the team has a lot of potential U-Turners and Vault Switcher, right? This means Scizor is most likely a choice band Scizor because a Sword Stand Scizor disallows you of using U-Turn productively. Landorus may not be a substitute Landorus because it would, be able, it would not be able to use U-Turn that productively. Celebi could very much be a U-Turner or even a nasty plat sweeper as those are very common. The team is weak to fast sweepers such as uh, Vol Quiver Dance, Volcarona or Dragon Dance, Dragon Knight so it's very possible that the team has a Choice Scarf user. Tyranitar wouldn't need Choice Scarf because Rotom Wash, Zizor and Celebi are all good Pokemon to handle common threats that Scarf Tyranitar fixes, such as Starmie. While Terrakion Revenge kills Sword Stance Lucario, so no need for Choice Scarf Tyranitar for that either. 
Rotom Wash could be a choice scarf, but a choice scarf Rotom W doesn't really solve the problem of a Volcarona, as Volcarona raises special defense with Quiver Dance, and Rotom Wash is too defensively weak and takes Sandstorm damage to effectively stop threats such as Dragon Dance, Dragon Knight, and Salamence. Landorus is a possible choice scarf user because it fixes most of the problems the team has and is an excellent revenge killer. Same goes for Terrakion, it could also be a Choice Scarf user. It's unlikely that both are Choice Scarf Pokemon because there isn't much need for too many Choice Scarf Pokemon, as Choice items restrict you from doing a lot at the same time, allow your opponent to set up easier. Celebi is a potential Choice Scarf user, but is very uncommon. Celebi would much rather want to heal up efficiently as Celebi is the, mo is the main status absorber of the team. Having natural cure ability and its health is very crucial in stopping opposing rain teams. So just by looking and analyzing our, our teams we have learned so much and, and deduced the main possibilities and threats. So let's continue with what we were trying to do. We were trying to choose the best lead. In order to find the best lead, you, f you have to find your opponent's weakness. Look at his team. Let's see how our team pairs off against it. Politoed completely shuts, the, uh, shuts down Tyranitar as Politoed is very defensive, of course, right? So we can take Crunch, uh, Ice Beam, Fire Blast pretty easily. So you could send out. Politoed anytime on Tyranitar. Roserade, we, we can check R Rotom Wash with Roserade and Gastrodon. Gastrodon completely shuts down Rotom Wash because, of course, we have the ability Storm Drain to take Hydro Pump. And it's a ground type, meaning it's completely immune to electric types. And Roserade, of course, is very specially defensive, as we've EV'd it to be. So it can take on Rotom Wash very nicely. Uh, for Scizor, we have Tentacruel and Skarmory both resisting it. Uh, Tentacruel could scald it. Skarmory could set up its Stealth Rock and Whirlwind on it if need be. Uh, Skarmory also takes U-Turn very nicely as it resists it times 0.25, which is which only does one fourth the damage on Skarm. And uh, Landorus, Skarmory is a great. While against Landorus, it completely shuts down Substitute, Landorus, uh, any type of Landorus sets actually. We also have a defensive Politoed and a defensive Gastrodon, if you recall, that both could also uh, pose as great revenge killers against the Landorus. For Terrakion, Terrakion is, is our biggest threat, as you can see here, because none of our Pokemon could actually take a Choice Banded. Uh, close combat or stone edge pretty nicely because it's pretty unpredictable as you would say because uh, even though our Politoed, Tentacruel and Jirachi have protect to scout the possible stone edge or cl close combat for uh, another one of our Pokemon to take that hit it is also uh, we also have Roserade, Skarmory, and Gastrodon that lack the attack protect, meaning uh, Terrakion could easily come in on the Pokemon, say, uh, Roserade that's weakened, and pose a great danger as it can easily close combat or stone edge us, as uh, Roserade is very defensively feeble, thus making it hard for us to predict what Terrakion would actually go for. So it's a big threat. As well as the Sword Stance set. The Sword Stance set is a very, very, very big threat if we allow it to set up. It's a good thing we have many Pokemon that don't allow it to set up. As our Politoed could easily scald it if it tries to set up. Our Roserade could Giga Drain it. Tentacle could scald it. Uh, Skarmory could Brave Bird or uh, Whirlwind it. Gastrodon could Earth Power it, and Jirachi could Iron Head it. Now, pick the Pokemon that you think is the best choice to lead off with.